Whoa! Welcome! 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 Welcome to WrestleCram! This is your boy, the host with the most, but humble, and I do mean humble, D. Nostra Novice, a.k.a. Derek, and I am here on a Wednesday to give you AEW Dynamite. I'm a little under the weather, you guys. Uh, I don't know. I think I got a stomach bug, but I'm here. I love y'all so much. I thank y'all so much for allowing me to be a part of your day. Um... It has been kind of a wacky, crazy day. It started off at probably 102 degrees, and it ended off with a severe, and when I do mean severe, severe thunderstorm. I mean, it's still raining outside, still thundering and lightning outside. We even got hail here in Louisiana, North Louisiana. It is crazy. But I do thank y'all so very much. I thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Um... And uh, w just like I, I can tell you, tell you, without you guys, it would not be me. I didn't even have my watch on. Um, but, you know, I thank y'all. I thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all a million times over. Um, and if I sound a little under the weather, trust me, it, it's, I, I, <laughs> whew, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a crazy day. It's been a crazy day. Um, so, um, first and foremost, uh, watch the show. I'm, I'm so out of it. Watch the show. Watch the show. Uh, if you if you like the show, give me a thumbs up. If you think the show needs a little bit more flair and you want to do some more to contribute, we're on the road to 100 subscribers. Um, go ahead, hit that hit that sub button. Hit it. Go ahead, hit the sub button. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna take a sip of my Wawa. Go Steelers. All right, did you do that? Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for hitting the sub button. Um. If you want to do more than the sub button and the, the the like button, go ahead and hit also the notification bell. I do five core shows as of right now. As of right now, I do five core shows every single day. I am feeling bad. I've been feeling bad for uh, about a couple of days. And I'm still here. I'm doing it. I'm strong. I'm, I'm doing what I got to do. Um, but... Um, what more can I say uh, about it? Uh, oh, well, let, let's do some spring cleaning before I do anything. Uh, Death Before Dishonor is next week. I will be doing a review on that show. Also, I will be doing a um, a review of Death of Dishonor. After that, the week after, I will be doing a prediction show of, of course, WWE SummerSlam. And I will be doing a review of WWE SummerSlam as well. Um, and tomorrow, tomorrow, bright and early, I will be doing the, uh, new episode of My Two Cent, where I will briefly go on why I think part-timers should never have any type of belt. Not one belt. They should not have a belt at all. Um, I will talk about that tomorrow. Uh, I'll have that up and ready for y'all to consume as well. Uh, but I just want to, uh, you know, um... I, I just want to let y'all know. I, I I have a huge collection of toys back there and collectibles and whatnot. Um, they're growing so big it makes no sense. Um, I have um WWE action figures. I have DC, which is my favorite. I have Marvel, which are fun toys. I also have a little bit of anime as well. I have um some One Piece and some Gundam Wing. Two of my favorite animes of all time. I even have a a a cinematic monster uh, figurine by the name of Candyman. I already showed y'all all these. I have ever, uh, which leads me to I don't have any AEW toys. I don't know why I did not do any AEW toys. Which AEW is the better to me? is the better show out of, you know, both brands. Until today! <laughs> Until today! I have who I think is my favorite wrestler on AEW. Greatest intro, greatest song, 
I love this guy to death. I have freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. He is the new addition to my wonderful collection of toys or whatnot I have. I cannot wait to, uh, when I get the um, my area where I'm going to build the new um, uh, station where I'm going to be doing it, um, they will be all out of boxes. I'm not trying to collect them and try to sell them. Um, I will take them out the box. They will be displayed all around so you can see in the background of all the cool stuff I have. Um, but I do have that. I also have some more stuff I'm going to show y'all. But it's only one. I do try to do one uh, per show. So I do have some more AEW stuff I want to show y'all as well. Uh, stay tuned to uh, Rampage or whatnot. I might have another toy to show you. But anyway, uh, other than that, you guys, let's talk about the review. And let's talk about, I think, probably one of the greatest episodes of any wrestling show that I've seen since I've been recording. Now, I'm not going to have so much enthusiasm like I usually do because, I once again, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'm feeling bad. Um, I truly am, you guys. But um, this show truly was the best show I have seen anywhere, anyhow. This show was just that good. It was so good. We got uh, 2022 Fighters Fest. This is week one of Fighters Fest. And it went, I mean, it went without a hitch. I mean, every single match, every single promo, every single thing that was on this show deserved to be on the show. It was just that damn good. When I tell you that this is this show is better than pretty much any pay-per-view I've seen uh, of AEW, of WWE. It, it, I mean, it, this show is so good. I'm just going to give you a bit for bit what happened. But, man, I will honestly tell you, if you have a DVR, if you, if you have a DVR, if you did not, you know, record this, Man, I, I I'm I'm I feel sorry for you because this show was so good from top to bottom, greatest show of all time. I, I swear, out of I mean goodness gracious, it was just that good. I just wish I was feeling a little bit better to throw so much enthusiasm on it. But you know, I digress. Let's talk about it. Um, the very first match was honestly my match of the night until the last match of the night. Um, which was Orange Cassidy versus Wardlow for the TNT title. Um, before they came out, before uh, the best friends and Orange Cassidy came out, um, they did uh, talk to Danhausen. Danhausen did give them uh, the best friends their uh, manager's license, so now they can come out and he's, now he's saying that we're going to cheat, and that was the goal. They're going to cheat. So, um. They, um, before it even got into the craziness or whatnot, this match was so good. It was so good. But I knew that Orange Cassidy wasn't going to win. I knew he wasn't going to win because Willow just got that belt. Um, so he's still fresh with that belt. I think he's going to have that belt for a while until CM Punk gets back. And then, you know, they will, you know, have their beef between those two. But, um... When I tell you this match was so loony, so crazy, but so good. Um, so much substance in this match. Some comedy as well. Um, and I know Jim Cardette's not a fan of the uh, of the comedy. And he does not a big fan of Orange Cash as well. I love you, Jim. I love you, Jim Cardette. I do. But this match, I, I if you're watching me, which I know you're not because you're so busy. But if you are watching me... I would love for you to go watch this match and try to keep an open eye and an open ear to what you see. Uh, first and foremost, um, Wardlow grabs the pockets of, <laughs> of Orange Cassidy, ripping them off and throwing them away. 
so he can no longer put his hands in his pockets. Warlow takes his uh, his top the top of his uh, his um, uniform off. Or Cassidy Kylie puts them back on. The uh, best friends uh, did a, they distracted the ref, and um, one of them grabbed a chainsaw from the outside. I mean, from the under the ring to throw it to Orange Cassidy to use to attack <laughs> or <laughs> to attack Wardlow. Uh, so that was the final straw. The ref kicked both best friends out. They are no longer uh, participants as managers. Uh, after that, um, we got a lot of orange punches on the outside of the ring. Also, um, Orange Cassidy did grab Warlow, uh, threw him a couple of times to the ring post. Um, and out of nowhere, Dan Housing is underneath the ring as well. And uh, Warlow grabs Dan Housing. Uh, he was about to curse him, but he was like, you know what? Uh, fuck this. I can't do this. So he kindly leaves as well. Uh, they get back into the ring. Um, he has done a couple of orange punches on um, Wardlow. Wardlow um, is trying to attempt to do uh, one power bomb. He tried to attempt to do one power, but he could not get those power bombs off because of numerous reversals of that nice little stunner uh, when he tried to do it as well. Uh, Orange Cassidy onto Wardlow, but Wardlow did eventually get one power bomb off. And that one is the one that does defeat um, Orange Cassidy. Um, he gets back and he gives him, shows him love. They give each other dap. Um, and that was it. It was a great match. Great match. I tell you, I cannot do this no justice. I'm telling you to watch the entire card. Uh, just, just how good it was. After that, um, we got a, um, a video package of... Uh, Bastard Pac actually defending the first time that uh, Atlantic uh, title, which he did win, against, against, is it Shoda, Oda, I think it is? I'm sorry, I destroyed those names so quickly. After that, we get a Chris Jericho promo where the match is called Barbed Wire Everywhere Match. That's what it's called. Um, he does say now his name is not Chris Jericho anymore. It's not the... Uh, the La Champion, it is not um, the Wizard now, it is the Pain Maker. He officially named himself the Pain Maker now. Um, and he talks about that everybody that is with Eddie, unfortunately, is not uh, always is injured or he disappoints. Uh, one he names out was, uh, was Ruby. Uh, Ruby is injured as of right now. Uh, so, he's just saying that this match is going to be him personally destroying him. He has done this match at 22 a long, long time ago when he was 22. Um, and that was the only match that he had during with Bob Wire. He did win that match. So, he said he's coming after him. He doesn't call him a, lose, a liar, but he calls him a loser. Um, after that, we go cut to commercial. We come back. Eddie Kingston is uh, entirely upset. He is totally pissed because he doesn't get the screen time that Eddie that Eddie uh, that Eddie that uh, Chris Jericho got. So he just says, "I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you." Ruby's in the back with a sling. You know, he just says he's coming for him. He, he's truly upset. Uh, after that, we get a uh, Kakashi. Uh, uh, the really young Japanese guy who I love. Is it Kanosuke Kakesha? I think I got it right that go around. Versus uh, John Moxley. Uh, this was probably the match that out of all the matches, this match, I mean, it is a typical John Moxley match where he is trying, either he's bleeding or he's going to have the other person bleeding. This go around, he did not have, he did not bleed. But he did bust open uh, Kakeshka uh, uh, with a knee to the face. I mean, he was bloody. 
But man, this young man is so good, so fast. Um, and I, I love, I love a couple of moves that he does. He does that, uh, that uh, blue, that blue thunder bomb, really good. And he has a beautiful, a beautiful, a uh, brain buster. Uh, but that was not enough to win. Uh, he did, uh, but he didn't win with a paradigm shift. Unfortunately, he won with a like a like a nice arm um, sleeper hold that made him tap out. Uh, he did win. Um, after that, we got a House of Black promo where if you let's fast forward to the match uh, where um, uh, Brody King did uh, face John Moxley for the belt and. Uh, Darby Allen came out at the end of that match and said, dude, you deserve this. We love you. All this. So, uh, <laughs> House of Black was not happy with that situation. And they said, we don't need, we don't need your, your, your sympathy or whatnot, but we are coming after you or whatnot. So a lot, I mean, there's a lot of people not liking House of Black or House of Black is not liking them. House of Black is the faction to beat as of right now. Not the Blackpool Fight Club. It is House of Black, hands down. If you don't believe me, comment who you think the faction is to beat as of right now. Uh, after that, we got Christian Cage. Christian Cage had a promo. Uh, he was talking about uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and how his dad uh, was a, he was a Hall of Famer. He is, hands down, a Hall of Famer. But he said that if he was still alive, he would be disappointed in him. I tell you, Chris Jericho is giving the craziest Hitting the utmost ridiculous promos. I mean, hurting people's dads and everything. These people are not even alive anymore. But he is doing a great job with this heel turn. Um, but uh, Luchasaurus does face. Um, he uh, uh, he faces the other Varsity Blood. Is it, what is that boy's name? Um, Griff, uh, Griff, Griff, uh, Grissom. Gresham? Is it Jefferson? Is it Garson? Is Garson? Uh, Griff Garson? I think it is. I, I just, uh, one of the Varsity Blondes. Uh, it was pretty much a squash match. Uh, two choke slams plus uh, he does that snare trap, but he calls it now Black Tar. Um, they uh, after the match, he grabs loose swords, grabs uh, Griff, throws him on the chair, grabs. Um, Pillman does a choke slam, throws him onto the table. The table did not break, so he grabbed it again, done another choke slam, and the table breaks that go around. Luchasaurus is a great heel. He's going to be like a beautiful, beautiful another Kane because he even has the Kane song. It's close to the Kane song, but it's close. But uh, I'd say it's, it's really good. I am loving Christian Cage's new story, his character. Love it, Thomas Twelve. Um, after that, we get a Chris Jericho Appreciation Society promo, and they are talking about they're upset because they are going to be suspended above the ring in a shark in a shark cage, and his group is not going to be. Well, he doesn't have a group. I mean, the only person that's with um, Eddie Kingston is Ruby Soho and uh, Ortiz. I think Ortiz, because I think the other one is gone. But anyway, um, but you know they were just upset behind that. Uh, also, the other young man that is facing Willa Yuta, he's saying, "Well, I understand because you know we're in a cage. I'm deadly, but you know he is waiting for death, uh, death, before, death before dishonor to get his hands on the pure champion, which is Willa Yuta." Um, after that, we got a Hangman Page promo where he talks about that he was close to uh, facing John Moxley, but he did not win due to the fact that Brody King did uh, knock him out of the ring. Uh, after that, we got a couple of members from the Dark Order, and they were upset with the House of Black as well. And they are going, they're calling out them, and they challenged them on Rampage Friday. So we will have um, the, the two gentlemen from Dark Order versus the House of Black. He also called them uh, spooky perverts. <laughs> I like that. It was pretty funny. Uh, after that, we got the Jake Hager versus uh, Claudio Castanoli. We had that match. 
Uh, it was a pretty decent match. I would say this is probably the low, the lowest match. I was never a Jake Hager fan, even when he was the champion in WWE. Um, never was a huge Jake Hager fan. Um, so this match was it was one sided because Claudio truly is he he is the he's the entire package when it comes to a professional wrestler and I respect Claudio uh or Cesaro if you want to call him that but it's Claudio Castanoli now um beautiful 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 moves that he do um I respect him I mean Jake Hager did a great job um, we also did get uh, a, a couple of members from the uh, Chris Jericho Appreciation Society to come out to attempt to try to help uh, Jake Hager, but it did no justice. Uh, Claudio did win with a, a beautiful, a beautiful, um, they call it the uh, Ricoli. I, I think it's a Ricoli bomb, but they call it the Ricola. Ricoli. And uh, he did win with that move. Great. It was a it was a good match. It was a good match. That was probably the lowest match uh, on the card. Everything else was just like just crazy good. Um, after that, we get a promo from uh, with Hook, and she made she asked a very great question. She was like, "Well, since you are undefeated, don't you think that you should have a title shot?" And he looked at her and he just walked away. That was a great question. I would like to see him try to go for one of those belts. Uh, not the world belt, of course, but I would love to see him go for either that FTR belt or go for that um, uh, that TNT belt. But I would love to see Ricky Starks in a match, in a feud with Hook. Love to see it. See what, see what we can do with that. Uh, after that, we got a... Um, we got a um, thunderstorm. Um, we got a thunderstorm pro promo where uh, Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa are talking. Uh, she was at a Joshi wrestling match where she was pinned. Um, it wasn't for the belt, but now the young lady will get a title shot. I forgot her name. Um, I think she's a Joshi wrestler as well. But she will get a title shot at Fighters Fest as well. But out comes, of course, Britt Baker, DMD, and other girl. And they are talking about that, you know, it's time for her to get back into the, the main scene and try to get that belt after the other young lady gets her title shot. Um, we will see what happens. It's going to be very interesting. Thunder Rosa has been playing, has been wrestling really, really well. I would love to see a Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker match again. It's really interesting. Like, Thunder Rosa is a dog when it comes to wrestling. I love uh, Thunder Rosa and her fighting style. After that, we got uh, Anna J versus Serena Deeves. Serena Deeves, to me, uh, if it comes to, like, the top three women in, uh, in AEW, Number one, of course, to me is Jade Cargill. Number two, it is uh, Thunder Rosa. And number three, it is Serena Deeves. Serena Deeves, Deeves is so good. You know who she reminds me of? She reminds me of Dean Malenko. And that and Dean Malenko was so good, it makes no sense. She, she is the submission specialist. And she did a great job today when she did uh, fight Anna Jay. They had Anna Jay's family out there, and just to see her lose, um, it was a pretty great match. Uh, she did put the Queen Slayer on Serena Deeves, and I thought she tapped out too. It looked like she tapped out, but she didn't. I guess she was just trying to, you know, maneuver herself to get to the ring. But uh, Serena, Deeves, Serena Deeves did put the Serenity Lock on uh, Anna Jay to win the match. Um, she kept. It on again. She cranked it up after the bell rung. But out comes Mercedes Martinez. She comes out um, to throw Serenity's off of her. I hope that we get a Serenity's Martinez and Mercedes uh, Mercedes Martinez. Hopefully, we get that match at Death Bar Dishonor. I love Mercedes Martinez, but Serenity's has been doing so much great work, you guys. 
I can't wait to see it. That's probably going to be my match tonight if it is. Can't wait. Um, after that, we got uh, a promo with Jay Cargill and the baddies with uh, Stokey. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> it's, it's crazy because um, Gray is still there. They don't trust Gray, but Stokely does. So, um, but they have so much stuff on their plate when it comes to Statlander and, of course, Athena. So, they will be facing each other in a tag match on, I think it's going to be a Rampage on a Fighter Fest. This is week one. Um, so, we will see that uh, on Friday. Um, she's still not feeling great as well. So, uh, he just says, trust, trust, trust what's going on. Trust the process or whatnot. So, um, after that, we get... Um, we get the match of the night, you guys. When I tell you this match was so good, I tell you, that's one thing that I can tell you about AEW that destroys everything that a that WWE does. They truly have a pure tag division, and they respect the tag division there, and the tag division deserves to be uplifted the way it should. I mean, those belts are so beautiful, but it's it's they actually have organically grown people to make that so good. Um, so we had the Young Bucks versus Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Swerve in Our Glory. Uh, and man, when I tell you this match, I cannot do this match justice due to the fact that it's so long. So many false finishes, and they were well-known great false finishes. It wasn't like finishes where, you know, it was just there for the for the pickings. I honestly thought that Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks were going to win, but, you know, the Young Bucks just got this belt. They just got this belt like a month ago. I, I was like, no, they're not going to lose this belt. But... We have new tag champions, which are uh, Swerve and Our Glory. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland are the new tag champions. I promise you, I, what I thought was going to happen was because uh, they did knock out the ref. We got a ref bump, and uh, the Young Bucks grab one of the belts. So, Swerve grabs the belt. I'm thinking he's going to swerve again. He's going to swerve Keith Lee, but that did not happen. Um, we got that crazy swerve stump to pin and win. Uh, when I tell you so much craziness happened in this in this match, I will tell you, if you don't watch anything of Fighter Fest, please watch this match. This match itself was so good. Uh, I respect everybody in this match. I cannot wait to see... Um, Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks get a shot, a run as the tag champions as well. Uh, I see so much potential in Ricky Starks. I love everything about Ricky Starks. Uh, on top of that, he's from New Orleans, so he's from Louisiana. He's a Louisiana native as well. But um, he is just so good on the mic and at, in the ring as well. A beautiful, um, uh, like a cutter uh, off of... Uh, off of Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, crazy, crazy kicks to everybody. We also got a triple kick between the Young Bucks and Ricky Starks onto Keith Lee. They do a nice little pose. They do uh, <laughs> super kicks onto Ricky Starks. I mean, it was just, it's so good. I'm telling you, I, I mean, <laughs> suicide dive from, of course, Keith Lee. I mean, man, the beginning of the match, it was a lot of, of, of flippity floppities uh, from uh, Matt and uh, Swerve. I mean, it was just great, hands down. I mean, I was I was so happy that they won. I was just giving out. I was just up, just clapping, giving love to Swerve and our glory. They truly do deserve those belts. Um, hopefully, we get um, the Young Bucks some type of time to, re to rest. 
or I promise you probably what's going to happen is that they're going to try, try to go to FTR as well. So, uh, other than that, I mean, uh, it fade to black. I thought it was a great show. Y'all, I love y'all so much. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Send it to people you like. Send it to people you don't like. Send it to, um, send it to this guy. Send it to him. Send it to this guy. Um, to Orange Cassidy. Send it to whoever you feel like it. I do love y'all so very much. Thursday, I will have uh, the new episode of, of course, My Two Cent, where I talk about why part-timers should not have any type of gold. They should not have no type of gold. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, of course, we got Rampage Smackdown Friday, of course, and we have the Dirt Sheet Roundup. We got the Dirt Sheet Roundup on Saturday. But I love y'all so much. Uh, until next time, y'all. Love, peace, and of course, wrestling.